right. Uh, let's no, I want to get my get my 15 minutes rolling here. So I actually got an opportunity to to, to demo this 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 little conversation in Tipanera's class last night. Um, and it kind of sucks because uh, we're moving farther and farther away from what happened in the Iowa caucuses. Um, this is not going to be a political speech whatsoever, uh, but it is going to be a technology speech. Because uh, one of the things that I thought was funny was in watching um, the State of the Union, you know, for, for as, as, as much of it as I could you know, deal with, um, in watching that, the one thing I thought was funny was that everything about it was, was completely partisan. I mean, it was heated, you know, the, the tearing the shit up at the end was, was pretty amazing. I was pretty surprised at that. But then, you know, very little shocks me given everything that's gone on. Um, but given all that partisan stuff, the one thing that both parties agreed on was that they were all mad at the fucking app in Iowa. Right? Now, what's interesting about that is that that app was basically allowing people to do the same thing that you would do uh, on uh, uh, America's Got Talent, uh, any of the, the, the group polling shows, I don't really believe that, that um, uh, what's the American Idol that shit stage is like. But anyway, to get people there, I think the votes legitimately count. Point is, that's hundreds of millions of people that are voting instantaneously and the results are tallied like that. So it's not like they don't have experience with that kind of stuff. So when they were trying to get on that app, I mean, there's nothing simpler than somebody going, yes, and it goes into a database and it's tallied up. I mean, that's what computers do better than anything else. I've advocated for a while that, you know, realistically, if you, if you go back and you look at what the Founding Fathers' intentions were when they wrote the Constitution and they created the United States, was to try to get the best representation that you possibly could. But they didn't have computers back then, right? So if you were to fast forward, um, you know, uh, uh, George Washington and Hamilton to today, and you showed them what was possible, they probably would like the idea of using technology to let people vote directly for the representational portions of the government. Right? I mean, you know, the Senate's probably still going to be there. You're probably still going to need the presidential office or the executive office just because of what its functions are. But as far as the House of Representatives goes, where it's based on delegates, and delegates are chosen, and their numbers are based on, consent, on you know, the, the population and consensus, um, I really don't see why we need representational government anymore. It's, 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 it's kind of interesting. I mean, even within our own local, it's an interesting question. Right? The reason that the executive board exists is because Nothing would ever get done if they asked you every single time which charity do you want to give money to this month and how much, right? I mean, it would just it would it would be a complete logjam, right? So we elect five people to get that done for us, and that's essentially what happens. I mean, they talk about a lot of their stuff besides money, but I use that as a simple example because that's like yes or no and a, a, a number amount, right? But all of us would have different opinions about that stuff, right? So if we all went to the hall, it would take forever. Well. That's the thinking when you get to the national level. The difference, though, is that when you talk about like what you know, typically the legislative branch of the government's doing, I mean, when they're proposing laws, the bad part about being representational is that the people can propose laws that have nothing to do with what their demographics want, right? So the idea that you could yourself just submit an idea, people start liking it, right? Just like they, you know, the, the uh, law can become liable to that certain extent. You can even take the same concepts and extend it to the judicial branch and we completely replace the whole concept of jury duty, right? I mean, to be honest, I think it would actually be better because the fact that, like, if I got called into jury duty and I was no way that I could get out of it, and I have to sit there and decide whether or not there's a murderer that's going to stare at me the whole freaking time, and I'm going to say that he's guilty, like, like, I didn't ask for that, you know what I mean? Like, I, I was just <laughs> over here, you know? I'm not trying to get involved in this dude's life, you know? But, um, but anyway, if you set it up to where uh, it was a video conference and you filmed the whole thing, and instead of 13 jurors, it was as many as you wanted, and the more people that watched it, the better the information would get, and you got paid for the amount of time that you watched it at your own convenience, because it was all recorded, I think that would be kind of cool, right? They would never know who you are, and you really don't care who they are, because you're just doing civic duty, that's part of being a juror in the first place, right? So, anyway, it's an interesting concept, but the thing that, 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 that bummed me out about it was that because both sides agreed on it, the last message that they kind of threw out there was the idea that, well, you know, paper is the safest thing. There's, there's, there's no way that paper can be, can be uh, 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 in any way circumvented. And I kind of disagree with that because, you know, I was there for Bush's election. I saw what the fuck happened in Florida. And I'm pretty sure that that could happen again. Everything can be, to a certain extent, thwarted. But I guarantee you, technology is going to do a better job of keeping that from happening. Here's a great example. How many of you access your bank account and do shit online? Yeah, right? Do you trust it? 
Uh, yeah. Well, I don't have the app, but I mean, <laughs> but that's my oh, point. Like, 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 that's a real, real like, personal like, thing. I, you know, like, I, like, I have an account at Wells Fargo, right? Okay, I log in all the time. You know, am I worried about somebody stealing my shit? How many have accounts? Do you have yes, Wells twice. Fargo. I've had people access my account twice. Once was when I used uh, uh, a checking account at a gas station, and another time was something that my wife did, and they ended up emptying the account. And both times it was only a couple hundred bucks in there. So, so I don't want to say it was fine. I mean, obviously it's a pain in the ass because they had to send you new cards and they were setting your shit. But you sure but, that you know how many accounts you have with Wells Fargo? What's that? You sure yeah. you know how many accounts you have with Wells Fargo? <laughs> well, that's not the right one. Uh, yeah. uh, but still, that's not the technology of encryption. That's Wells Fargo being fucked up. That's a, that's a, that's a totally different thing. <laughs> but, but anyway, my point was kind of you know, angling back to encryption that, you know, uh, a Bitcoin and blockchain are another good example of how, you know, technology can make it to where once the thing is set in motion, nobody can get into the system. And trust me, that shit works. Uh, 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 the encryption that they use when you access your bank account is so good that, oh, well, like, like, for example, remember those, those, those two people that the, uh, uh, the CIA and the FBI wanted to get into their phone and couldn't get into their phones? Right? This is, I mean, like, and that was just to keep people out of their fucking phone. Well, that wasn't like the kind the, of encryption that keeps people. The cost, the cost huh? to get into that one phone is astronomical. Yeah, well, and ironically, yeah. someone in Israel was able to do it, which is fucking disturbing, and they kind of just breeze right over that. But, but anyhow, I'm like, really, we make the product here, and we don't have people that can figure that shit out? That's kind of scary. But um, <clears throat> anyway, I, I, I thought it was funny because the, the them saying the paper is the way to go and that we shouldn't use this type of uh, uh, this type of voting to be able to run the business of government is really them saying you really shouldn't look into this because if we were if you replace that with us then money wouldn't run fucking politics anymore right the people would actually it would be a true democracy at that point and, and I think it's fascinating because normally when I say that you know I get comments and grumbles from people like well I mean you don't want everybody voting on everything <laughs> you know like like why could we possibly trust that and I'm like oh but it's totally cool for people to run around with fucking assault rifles right we're gonna fight for that fucking right but we're not going to let people like vote their own conscience. I got a lot of guns, so I'm not trying to make a second amendment conversation here. But I think that it's funny because it's that same thinking. Like, oh, I wouldn't trust that person to vote. Well, why? Right? I mean, don't fucking like his suggestion then. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's the power of the whole thing is that it's cumulative. So I think that those kinds of things you're going to see evolving with time. I mean, the same type of stuff that I'm telling you about for the construction industry, where the world that you're going to live in in 10 years from now is going to look drastically different than the one you're in now, may be the same way governmentally speaking. Right? I mean, at the end of this year, at the end of this election, some shit's going to go down. And I don't know which way it's going to go, but I mean, I expect something crazy to happen because there's just way too much volatility. And what comes out of that is going to be interesting to see. And I don't know if technology is going to solve that problem, but a lot of things are going to be on the table and people are going to look at things differently regardless of what the outcome is. So as a tech person, I'm going to just throw my hat on right away and say that I have a feeling that you're going to see a lot more electronic civic duty being provided for you as the course of events continues, but not right away because they're kind of, both parties are actively trying to keep that from being accessed. And think about the power of really getting money out of politics. Right? I mean, wouldn't that be a freaking wonderful thing? It's all a lot of our problems.